so great to visit with you. How does it make you feel when you hear that? You think about your journey over 30 years ago. When you hear the music on that printed instrument, what is the feeling? Well, the feeling was good when I heard it first, but you have to understand the story, how we got it. Because when we develop the technology, we have to make many, many parts because we develop a totally new process with totally new materials. We didn't talk about the material, but this is a high performance plastic. And Tom Enders made a statement that he wants to reduce the weight of an airplane by 1,000 kilogram, and this is the solution. And we will build uh, with many machines parts for his airplane to meet this goal. Okay, so uh, obviously 3D uh, printing, sorry, go on. But maybe how did it happen? When our engineers develop these new processes, they have to make many different parts. And they just, one of the engineer had the idea, why don't we do a Stradivari? And, uh, and when we took a photograph, this was picked up um, by The Economist uh, when they made a big story about industrial 3D printing. Uh, this is something different than consumer 3D printing, okay? And um, they picked this photograph out of 50. We had a lot of interesting technical parts, but this is what they picked and made the story and that this is a revolution of manufacturing. Okay, so uh, I, I don't know what year that was. People have been talking about the revolution in 3D printing for, for quite some time. Where are we in the revolution? I think we are quite well on path. Uh, you may have heard about GE's acquisition in Additive. They acquired some of our smaller competitors uh, for uh, quite huge amounts of money, and this uh, can give you a feeling for the value for them. Does that make you a little scared? Not at all. I mean, we are part of the deal. I mean, uh, these companies are very good customers from us. They are our licensees, they use our technology, uh, they use our core technology, so we are part of this. Um, but what happened was, uh, you remember Tom Enders saying uh, pollution, uh, but uh, GE developed a part, an injection, uh, uh, a fuel injector, that is a part that costs a few thousand dollars. This, 20, is, on, this is on an aircraft engine. This is on the aircraft engine. And uh, a, a part that costs a few thousand dollars, normally 20 of these units are in an engine. But with this unit, they were able to reduce the pollution factor by 2%, which represents a value per plane over the lifetime of the engine of several hundred million. And uh, just for, uh, for GE, uh, this made an effect on their business in engines of 30 billion. Okay, so uh, if we take the, the, world, uh, in, in, sort of the world of industry uh, writ large, a tiny, tiny percentage of it is now being done uh, via, via, via additive technologies. Ten years from now, what is that number? Uh, I just would like to pick up on, uh, on the two gentlemen that uh, talked before, because their key visions is fully supported by what we do. You may believe it or not, but we're working with two research labs on a new battery technology. And these are new mat materials. And the goal is, at least from the American guy, within the very near future, to drive with a Tesla with one charge of the battery from San Francisco to Boston. Okay, uh, so how long is that in the future? This, I think, will be in years and not in 10 years. Okay? So less than so 10 we years. Have, and and what, the, what the key here is, and this is what most people don't understand from industrial 3D printing or additive, we create new materials during the process, and this is a very special alloy. This will have a totally different property than the, the kind of batteries you are using today. So why is it that the additive process makes for a longer-lived battery than other processes of Very simple, because during the process, we start with powder that is melted via laser. And the melting process is changing the material. But the difference is when you use a conventional melting process, like in a casting house, 
you have very high big pots of material. But in this case, we do it on a microscopic level. And I met uh, a few years ago a guy where I wanted to make my postdoc, Mr. Bloomberg, and he's a Nobel Prize winner. And he asked me, uh, what are you doing now? And I said, I'm an additive. And he said, oh, that's boring. And I said, hey, are you aware what we are doing? We, do, we look into microscopic phase transitions of uh, materials. And he said, oh, microscopic phase transitions. That sounds great. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and then another application I may give you, I cannot talk about. Oh, wait, 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 just back to the car for a yeah. moment, if I may. Yeah. Okay. So you're saying DLD25. You're going to show up in a Tesla or probably a BMW. I think they're a sponsor. You're going to show up in a BMW that you're going to have driven from, from Moscow or from uh, Vladivostok. Uh, at least the guys we are working are convinced that this will happen. Wow. So that's not that yeah. far off. OK. And, and so if go you on. take this now to the aerospace, I think um, what Mr. Picard said is, is very true. I'm a glider pilot. And when I started gliding, we were very happy when we were able to fly 300 kilometers. I, we fly without engine, you understand? All without engine, okay? Today, the world record, it's a friend of mine, Klaus Ohrmann, is 3,000 kilometers with a glider within 15 hours. We can only fly at daylight. Right. So, so what does that mean for the world of, of industry itself? Let's, let's just have a hypothetical that you get invited one day to Trump Tower yeah. and you go up those gold elevators and uh, you go into a meeting room and you're said, we, your technology is incredible, but we have a problem with it. The problem is you're costing jobs. Does it create jobs or not? This is the prime political question in the US and elsewhere. So what, what, what would you say uh, in that uh, discussion? I can only look at the applications we have developed so far. Uh, we started uh, in the medical field with a dental application about 10 years ago. And uh, the dental application, which to give you an idea, about two years ago I stopped counting the numbers, but two years ago we made 10 million dental parts, replacement parts, within on 100 machines. And we created several thousand jobs in the industry because of this, because we have taken away the dirty part of the job and we give the opportunity to the workers to do the fine part, the high value part of the job. And by the way, this whole uh, dental industry is coming back to Germany, to a high priced country. And I think Mr. Trump uh, will feel similar uh, when I tell him that we can do this for his country. Okay, interesting. Uh, so, is, is this bringing down the price of dental implants? Yes, I mean, when you go on in this industry, um, you, especially the medical industry, this is huge. I mean, we had on stage, uh, on our employee information uh, day, a, a startup, it's a social startup. And we have developed for them to make orthesis for kids. And I have learned that many million kids after births die because they do not get an orthosis in time to be able to, uh, to breathe. With our technology, we help them, and uh, their goal is to make up to 100 million orthesis for kids uh, to just uh, save life. Right, and you do cranial prosthetics as well, all sorts of prosthetic Absolutely. Uh, I solutions. mean, uh, we have so broad applications. Medical is the most important one, but when, when you are in a position like we are, I mean, we are the market leader by far in industrial 3D printing, that means in serial production, our installed base is more than 50% than the whole market, okay? And therefore, we are working, for instance, with Siemens uh, to really take uh, this technology to the digital factory, and uh, Siemens has created a digital factory in Sweden, Finspong, where they do their burner repair. When you look at a big uh, generator, energy generator, that is gas driven, the gas burner is just burning like you're heating at home and uh, you repair it and they repair it with our device and after they understood that repairing the device, they could change the performance, they found out a similar effect what GE did, that they are saving 2% of the energy 
which is great. That means a huge impact on, uh, on, on their business. So a digital factory, uh, just take us a little bit further on that. Does that mean obviously networked machines? Eventually that has to mean almost automated, self-running, self-correcting machines that understand their environment, understand, uh, sort of yeah. almost have an awareness, is that yes. right? And this is correct. And uh, what most people do not understand, when they started to talk about 3D printing, they were thinking there is one machine and this is just changing the world. This is not the case. I mean, the interaction with the conventional technology, with the conventional processes, this is the key. And this is what we are working on. For instance, we signed up on a strategic cooperation with Georg Fischer Machining Solutions. They are number one in the high-end machining world. And they have sold 100,000 machines over the last uh, 50 years. And we are now working on the connectivity of our technology with this technology, and this makes a change. So what are the two or three things that a digital factory can do that a traditional factory cannot? In principle, the digital factory is just a combination of design. Most people do not see this today. I mean, you see the last acquisition of Siemens in Mentor Graphics. Why did they do this? It's simply they are buying the front end, which is a design software, okay? So you combine the design software with the automation software, and you are able to simulate the factory. And um, in this uh, accord, together with our technology, we can simulate totally new designs. And what uh, Tom Enders is looking for and Mr. Picard are parts that you cannot make conventionally, but you will be able to make it in the digital factory. Okay, it sounds like fewer jobs, I gotta say. There sounds are, like fewer uh, jobs. This is a, a lot of jobs, <laughs> and, and uh, even. Uh, uh, the editor of uh, Susutoichi Zeitung, Mark Beise, for the economical uh, part, uh, he wrote a new book, and after a discussion with me, he told me I inspired him, uh, and the book's name is The Answer, The German Answer to Silicon Valley. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, I think a lot of people are acquainted with 3D printing, the idea of it, at least in their homes. It hasn't taken off as well as some people had, had anticipated. Do you see that eventually reversing course, that we might have these printers in our home, no, or, or I mean, not really? No. I mean, you have a digital camera. And have you ever sought to print your pictures on your inkjet printer at home? Not really. This is the answer. Right. So we have worked together with an internet company, Shapeways, that use our industrial printers. And when you sign, uh, send your data file via internet to these guys, you get the professional photograph back or you get the professional part back, in our case, in a few days. Okay. And this is what it is. Uh, so what about uh, other applications of, of sort of the idea? There's the, yeah. idea, there's the idea that you could print your food, yeah. uh, sort of organic printing, print a tree. Yeah. Is, are we going to be printing trees? Uh, I give you another idea. I okay. had a very interesting... Well, wait, uh, what about the tree? <laughs> not, not, interested in tree. Okay. not interested in tree. Not interested in tree. Okay. I had an interesting uh, discussion, and I, I like to, to pick up these ideas together with the people I talk. Okay, yesterday at the dinner, uh, I had an interesting discussion with uh, Erwan Haup. Uh, he is uh, he's a shareholder of Zalando, and Zalando is selling a lot of things. They are also selling shoes. And we developed yesterday, during dinner, a solution for them to reduce the return rate. As normally here at Zalando in the States, is a, it's a company like Zappos. Right. Uh, they have return rates for shoes of 80%. 80%? 80 percent. 80 percent? 80 percent return rate for shoes bought that's the most through the interesting internet. I've learned, the interesting thing I've learned today, actually, yes. despite all the cool yes. stuff. And I asked him, how much value has this for you if I re reduce this rate down to 20%? And this is huge value. And we have the technical solution to do this. So I'm going to get a 3D printer on my foot? Or how does that work? No, what you do in principle, uh, it's what we have developed um, with another startup. It called Souls. Uh, they had the idea, was the ex uh, co founder of Shapeways. And uh, she wanted to do, uh, let me say, a, a more reasonable application than uh, just make consumer products. So she developed a software where she can do with three 
uh, photographs of a foot on an iPad, the complete 3D uh, shaping of the foot. With this kind of data, you can take for, of each uh, con consumer more or less the three-dimensional shape of the individual foot, which is different from right to left. And with this kind of data, you can build a store of uh, the individualized uh, patterns, and then everybody gets his individual shoe. Wow, OK. That, that, that sounds And this is cool. a standard shoe yeah. company, OK? Right. But they just put in a specific part made on our machine, which is less than $10. And this is changing their business. Now, of course, for, for um, Zappos or Zalando to sell those shoes, the shoes themselves have to be sort of indexed and matrixed by, by the same measurements that you, that you would put a foot but on. The correct? point is, it's just a standard shoe as today. And the difference is, you change the insole. OK, so you could say, if you're Zalando, we'll give you a $25 credit if you use this method, simply because we're going re to reduce your churn. Your Absolutely. They will probably get for free the shoes. And this is not only the shoe industry. I mean, we are here at DLD. And I see it's a little bit different than the other conferences uh, I have been. But uh, the lady I, uh, I uh, met when I left the party yesterday evening, uh, she asked me, is there anything going on in fashion? And I can tell you, uh, we have customers that make clothes with 3D printing because you can make uh, all kinds of clothes. So you can make hats, you can make clothes, you can make uh, shoes. And uh, in the consumer world, it's already active. So this is all done on the industrial internet, on the industrial 3D printing machines that are coming from us. OK, uh, I think maybe we'll have time for one question. Let me ask you a question. A lot of entrepreneurs here at DLD do you see yourself a little bit 30 years ago in the people here? And as you think about your own entrepreneurial journey, what would you tell the people yeah. today when you see the Stradivarius being played? Yeah. Uh, it's sort of an emotional experience. So, yeah. so what's your, what's your uh, journey there? These are all no, new businesses. And uh, we have created a, a third company. I have the basic core technology. Then EOS is more or less the second company. Uh, but we have made a third company, what we call AM Ventures. And, uh, and we help, uh, so we have started 20 startups uh, over the last uh, uh, two years, especially developing business models for very specific markets in this, and we are doing very well. And this is my answer. Okay, but Please I asked come. you how you felt. That wasn't the answer. I, I feel very good. Yeah. I mean, I feel excellent. <laughs> and when I left the party yesterday evening, I had a short chat with Mr. Reitzle, who put us in space because he said, in uh, 1990, it's good to have a European answer right. to the American technology. Okay, but what would you say to the entrepreneurs in the audience today? The As audience, someone who sort of succeeded yes. at, with the vision from a long time ago. Meet our 3D printing cluster sessions. We have started with this three years ago in Munich. We are exporting this model to the major universities in the world, for instance, Harvard or Stanford. Austin, we have a big place in Austin. Just visit these guys and come up with your ideas. We'll find a business model. And uh, this Souls company, they got a valuation after two years of 60 million, and they have never touched one of our machines. OK, so I think we have time for one question. Yeah. Time for one question? Yeah. Where do I get the shoes? No questions? OK. Let's end. Maybe Sorry. just on the shoes, we have a workshop this afternoon where this is a model where you can go and create a business just on our right. workshop. So basically, send all the pictures of your feet to Dr. Langer. He'd be happy to uh, help you with some new shoes. Uh, it was an enjoyable visit. Thank you so much.